Hey guys, so today we're going to be doing Mario More Comfortable. Now it's very very similar to Mario Less Comfortable, but just with a few extra steps. So I highly suggest if you haven't done the Mario Less Comfortable, you watch that video first, it's in the link in the description. So you do that first and this will be much much easier, I promise you that. So what we're going to do in this program, what we have to do is we have to print a pyramid whose height depends on the user. Once again, it's the same thing. So if the user inputs a height of 8, we need to print a pyramid with a height of 8. And if the user inputs a height of 4, we need to print a pyramid with a height of 4, and so on and so forth. We've been through this in the Mario Less Comfortable. Now, the more comfortable version just actually has an extra pyramid here. So remember, in the Less Comfortable version, we printed a pyramid that was right aligned. Now, we just need to print another pyramid next to that pyramid that's left aligned. Right? That's the only difference between the less and more comfortable versions. So to start us off, um, we're going to actually just copy and paste the code from our less comfortable version and just make a few modifications because it's exactly the same. So if you recall, this code which we had earlier from the less comfortable, when we compile it and run it, this is the output, right? It's a right, uh, it's a right line pyramid. All right, so we knew that. Now all we need to do is print a left aligned pyramid beside it. Okay, so the differences are, we need a space, right? We need spaces and we need hashes. Okay, so now you might be tempted immediately to just start another for loop. Because you might be thinking like, okay, we've used for loop for everything so far. Now we use another for loop for the spaces and another for loop for the hashes. Well, you would be wrong because of this simple thing. If you try to see a pattern of the number of spaces on every line, you'll notice that there is none because the spaces on every line is actually two. So on line one, there are two spaces, on line two, there are two spaces, on line three, there are two spaces, and so on and so forth. So the number of spaces is actually a constant. It doesn't depend on anything. For in any line, there are only two spaces, which means that we don't need any sort of loop. All we need to do is very simply just printf, space space because we need two spaces all right and that's it now all we need to do next is print a left aligned pyramid right that's all this is it's a right line pyramid next to a left line pyramid so we know that the spaces come first because the spaces come in between the two hashes so now all we need to do is print a left aligned pyramid that's it and we've done this before in the less comfortable version so what we need to do is for column equals zero, column less than or equal to row, column plus plus. All right. So we just need to print a hash. And it's that simple. And that's just because we've already gone through all the logic in the less comfortable version, if you remember that. So it's exactly the same logic. It's the same conditions. It's the same everything to print a pyramid next to this pyramid all right and it's all within the same main loop so basically what's happening here is this whole loop is we're printing a new line before we print a new line we want to print the spaces to make the right line pyramid actually right aligned we want to print the hashes for the right line pyramid we want to put the spaces between the left line and the right line pyramid and finally we want to print the hashes for the left line pyramid so it really is that simple now let's just check Let's compile our code and dot slash Mario to run it. Enter right here, let's say four. And that's pretty much it, guys. It's very, very simple if you've completed the less comfortable version. Everything just makes sense logically. And if you want, you can go ahead and check 50. And sh everything should be okay here. Uh, as we know, uh, so type in your GitHub username and password. All right, and while this is preparing, guys, uh, I'm going to be uploading every single problem set for the CS50 course. So make sure to subscribe because you're going to get the entire CS50 course solutions on this channel. Also, make sure to leave a like on this video if it helped you. I hope it was simple enough to understand. It was just literally two extra steps from the less comfortable version. And that's pretty much it for this video, guys. I uh, hope you enjoyed. And yeah, peace. Bye, David.